one of my favorite movies that we like still quote to this day is Master of Disguise. And it just had its like 22nd anniversary, like last week. And I was just like, oh my gosh, wait, I'm talking to Jennifer. <laughs> that is so awesome. I cannot even tell you how many people you around your age the same thing they're like that movie and it's so funny you have a whole long career and you don't ever know like what people like or remember and that film <laughs> really touched so many people and that, that's awesome that's yeah. awesome Kristen Malgnado here for Pop Culture Planet where we cover the world of entertainment while shining a light on representation and inclusion I am so excited to share our conversation with Jennifer Esposito who is an actress we all know and love. She's made her directorial debut with her new film, Fresh Kills, and you need to check it out. Let's talk more about it. I'm excited to talk with you about Fresh Kills, you know, making your directorial debut, but not even just that, your direct, wrote, produced, starred, and like you wore all the hats. I think that's incredible. Thank you. What what inspired this film? Like, where did the inspiration come from to bring this to life? So I grew up around uh, some people like this, not in my family, but in uh, around me. And I saw the young women like this, like really um, very, uh, a lot of rage and a lot of violence where I grew up. And I just chalked it up to, I guess, well, their families in the mafia. And as I got out into the world, I left uh, where I was from, Staten Island, um, at around 17, 18. And when, as I got out into the world and I, I went to, you know, take on my career and just being female and told I was to this, not enough of that, or too ethnic or not ethnic enough. And then I was, I was uh, to New York or I was whatever it was that rage that I saw in these young women started to feel like my own. Mm. And it made me realize that it was less about who their families were, but more about that they didn't have a choice in the matter. And I thought choice is something that really rings true for me as far as like the roles were put in in society. You know, we're all pushed into something and told who we are or who we're supposed to be as women. We're told supposed to be sugar and spice and all, the, you know, all the nonsense we're told. Mm-hmm. And I just don't agree with it. I, I think, you know, it, it's it's very difficult to find a voice in a world that keeps telling you to stay quiet. And that's really the essence of what the movie's about. I love that. You said that so beautifully and you you brought it to life so beautifully in the film. What has it been like for you to like specifically like as a director and writer and tackling this kind of specific genre that maybe has been more male skewing? What has that been like for you? I tell you, it has not been easy. I'm just going to be honest. And to all the film lovers out there and the filmmakers and anyone striving to be, when you're a female, to do this kind of thing is already hard. And we all know that. Um, If you saw recent reports that just came out, the numbers are abysmal of, of male to female ratio of behind the camera. It's really, it's really, it's, it's hard. It's hard to see. Then take the fact that I was a first time writer director, which again, goes to those boxes of the where, oh, she's this actress that we know from X, Y, and Z. So we know what she can do. No, you don't. Um, And then you take on the fact that I was the first female, first female to step my foot into this very masculine male genre of the mafia. (laughs) I don't know many how many more hurdles I could have jumped to get this and still and still heard something just the other day of someone saying, you know, it's not really mafia because, you know, like a Robert De Niro isn't in it. And it's just like. It's 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 mind blowing. It's really mind blowing. It's um so it 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 hasn't been easy. I will say that it really hasn't been. But we are the first to take a look at the mafia from the females and the young females point of view, Adessa Zion and Emily Bader, who play these sisters so perfectly. Um, I mean, you know, they leave their hearts on the screen. So this is the first time and a first time that a female director is even directing something in this genre. So it's been amazing. And then it, just a really hard thing to do. 
You mentioned Odessa and Emily. It's so funny because, uh, you know, the, they anchor this film, but they are such rising stars. Like, you know, like they are blowing up right now as well. Mm -hmm. um, they're just so incredible. And I'd love to hear, like, how did you find them, you know, when it came to casting this film? I knew I was going to really have to search for these young women because the young women I grew up around, uh, you know, they had a lot of a lot of stuff, like a lot of rage, a lot of, you know, and this wasn't. I think that kind of thing is not something you can really act like you really had to know these characters on a, on a level, whatever that was. So it wasn't easy. Um, Emily, uh, you know, was in a, like a, it was, she wasn't really picked to be seen for this. Um, and I, listen, nobody's fault. It just, it is what it is. Um, she hadn't done a ton of stuff. And it was like, oh, OK. Um, but I kept looking through all the like the the piles that were, you know, discarded. And um, I kept coming back to her mm -hmm. and kept coming back to her. And uh, I thought this kid, she's something so special about her. And I will tell you, and for all actresses out there, I had given three scenes mm -hmm. to for for the audition. And some actresses didn't even do one of the scenes because one of the scenes has no dialogue. Mm -hmm. And it's just her having to portray what I needed her to portray in the scene without dialogue. And that is not easy to do. And as you know, the movie, she has to do that. Mm -hmm. So when I saw that she was not only able to do that, but like did it so well I was like I have to meet this 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 young woman and I met her and then the casting and myself we were like yeah, she's just fantastic and Odessa again it was like I don't know who the heck I'm finding to do this who's gonna have that kind of fight and 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 rage and all that stuff mm -hmm. um and a friend of mine read the script and uh, saw her in a show that she played this Italian teenage kid in Brooklyn. And I was blown away. I was like, I just love this kid. And no one could beat her in my mind. So it was like, I need, that's her. Like, that's her. When I met her on a Zoom, I gave her the job instantly. We were yeah. chatting and she was like, she got on the, she actually got on the Zoom. She was like, what the fuck? This script is crazy. And she was just <laughs> so fun and just so who you see and full of fire and um, just an extraordinary actress. And I, I did, I gave her the job like on the Zoom. Wow. She was like, really? really? I said, no, no, really. Cause I was so clear that this was her. And they just, as you know, they, 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 kill it they are so good they are so good and that's why i appreciate you having us on because you know we're a little we're we're not a little film people get so mad at me when i say that but we're independent we're a small independent film meaning monetarily so we don't have budgets of major marketing and it would be a real crime to not recognize the performances of these young women. Yeah. Oh, they're incredible. I've spoken to Odessa before and she has that personality, you know, like that moxie, if yep. you will, you know, and, and I mean, it's so funny that you mentioned Emily, you know, hadn't really done as much. And I mean, now she's leading her own show. She's about to star in like the next big book adaptation, you know, yep. it's like, yep. you know, you're really seeing like you guys found these young women, at like the start of their careers and like it's going to be so awesome to watch them continue to to rise and like Agree. see that this is like where they started um, and also david iacono who's in oh, the movie. David yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's great, great. He's great. And he's now he's doing Jurassic Park four. So it's like, oh, my God, it's, 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 <laughs> it's really it's it's really nice to see. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I feel like also. Um, you know, I know you're from Staten Island. I was actually originally from Staten Island. I was born in Staten Island. I'm, I'm a New Yorker as well. And I feel oh, like really that's crazy. Yeah. So and I feel like Staten Island is just such a character in the film as well. Like, you know, um, so what did you guys actually film there? And what was it like kind of coming back to your roots and like bringing the film to life there? So I was born in Brooklyn up until around 10 and then moved to Staten Island. It was really like a culture shock because in Brooklyn, like you're on the stoop, you're hanging out with everyone in Staten Island. is a completely different thing. Um, 
And it it definitely, as you know, it's a world onto its itself. It really is like you to really understand Staten Island, you have to be on Staten Island. Like you really have to. And I really wanted to capture that. So when people were like, you know, you should go to Atlanta, you'd get better rates and the fit. And I was like, no, you don't understand. We have to film in Staten Island because you cannot. And I wanted also the actors to feel the energy because there's a very specific energy in Staten Island. So I made them all stay there and they were like, where are we? I said, don't worry about it. So um, I, I needed that for sure. And, and the essence, and especially I'm doing a film about Staten Island, it was only right to bring the money back to Staten Island. Um, but we did, we filmed there. It was a uh, crazy really wild because it was like the bakery that I used to go to. And it was like, you know, uh, the school uniforms that they wore was like the school uniform I wore. And it was, it was all really, it was pretty intense. I remember, you know, I, I drove myself to set every day and I, I, you know, drive to Staten Island thinking like, I've been thinking of this film. Mm -hmm. I left Staten Island, like no joke for 20, 30 years. I've been thinking of this film. So to be able to film it on Staten Island was, was really amazing. It was really amazing. You mentioned how long you've been like kind of thinking about this. I, I know I've heard stories of like you had to mortgage your home to like get the film made. You've shared a lot already, but what was it about this story that was just like so important to like you, you were like, we have to tell this. Like, I don't care how we're telling this. I have a really big problem with injustice. Like I have a really big problem. And the years of being told who and what I was and who I was and what I was capable of in this business and as a female really had hit a, hit, hit a wall with me. And what had happened for the last many years, I started to just shut down and and just do work that my heart wasn't into. And I really woke up extremely depressed one day and um, tired of hearing myself complain, but it wasn't only for the industry. It was what I was seeing for females in society and how we're still fighting for, for, you know, better treatment and our rights and our health care. And like, I, I, I just, I have a re like it, it, it pains me. And I felt like, stop complaining. I can go out. I can do the picketing. I can do all the stuff. I can write the notes. I can, I can vote. I can do whatever. I can complain to my agent, but it was doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And if you wait for the world to change, you are waiting on the wrong people to do anything. Like it's just not happening. So how are you going to change it? What are you going to do? And I just thought, You've been saying you wanted to do this for a long time because I wanted to go to film school. I wanted to go to NYU, but I my parents couldn't afford it. And I didn't see any representation as a female writer director. So I thought, I guess, an actress. And it just never was as satiating as this was mm -hmm. and to tell the whole story. So I just knew that this was going to, going to connect with men and women because underneath the family story dynamic, underneath the sister story dynamic, underneath the mother and daughter and the father and daughter, daughter dynamic, what was left is finding a voice in a world that tells you not to have one. And I guarantee nine out of 10 people know what that feels like. That's so amazing. Like, I just think that that, and it's so like, it's so true. It's so true. Um, you know, like, I feel like there's, I can think of countless times where people were like, well, you can't do that. And it's like, well, you don't know anything about me. What do you mean that you don't, I can't do That's it? Right. That's right. That's I've, right. I've had people say like, you can't be on camera. You don't have the right look. And it's like, okay, well, you know, we just got to follow your inspiration and do it ourselves, you know, do what we want. 100%. You listen, I was just on another podcast before and they was like, what do you want to tell to, you know, young and upcoming independent filmmakers or anyone that, and I was like, everyone, listen to no one. Listen to no, if I listen to anyone on this, and I don't mean, you know, someone who's trying to like give some constructive criticism, that's not what I'm saying. Do not listen to other people's negativity and their limited perception of what they believe 
that's their that's their idea about what they think I'm capable of. That has nothing to do with me. Has nothing to do with me. I was sitting with someone who was involved in this movie and they were like, well, you know, I don't think you'll reach the, you know, the awards, Oscars and stuff because it takes so much money and it's a little film. And it's like, yeah, maybe not, but we're going to try. Why am I going to allow your small thinking to inhibit my life? If you allow that, there's no reason to get up in the morning. Everything you you see is like, we're doomed. Everyone's doomed. It's all going to hell. I mean, you don't get up in the morning. So I just say when it comes to that and your career and knowing who you are, no is a suggestion from someone else. That's it. And you just keep going. Since this is your first film and you're the first film you've written, um, how did you do it? Did you take classes? Did you, did you like, you know get mentorship or did you just kind of like have a vision and you kind of went and, and did it? Yeah. Like how did, how did you bring it to life? I always say that my mentor was Barry Jenkins and he doesn't know I exist. <laughs> <laughs> he was my imaginary mentor. Um, I tell you, like I said, I've had the idea in my head for a very long time. Um, but I did never, I never written a script before, but God knows how many I've read throughout the years. So I did read, you know, uh, books on like, you know, format and stuff. And as I was reading, I realized like I knew this instinctually because of all of the, you know, all of the uh, scripts that I've read all through the years. So anyone wanting to make a film, you better be reading tons of scripts. And that had, that had helped me. But to me, really, um, I, what I had studied in in class, and I also teach. I I've been teaching for the last two years, and I've taught throughout my career. I teach acting and writing and all the different things. And what I realized is what I love is character mm-hmm. and people and like why we do what we do. So that is what I am always going to write from. I write from character. I want to know why this person woke up and did X, Y, and Z. I want to know what the history was. Why is she doing that? Why is she doing that? And for that, that's how I wrote Fresh Kills was through character, knowing who Rose was and knowing what Rose wanted and where she saw herself at the end. And what was I going to do to get her there? And what were going to be the obstacles? So I went on that very practical, follow the character kind of thing. you know, outlining, I still struggle because I'm not that head. I write in pictures, I see it and I'm like, oh, right, that. And and so it's still to be faster because I have so many ideas that I want to write, but I really go on the journey. And I know Quentin Tarantino talked about it. Like once you get in there and I like, they start to speak and it's like, Oh, go this way and go that way. So it's a beautiful discovery, but it definitely takes a bit longer. So I'm, I'm still always learning, but I think following character is so, so, so vital and so important. And I think again, that's why the film is hitting people Mm -hmm. because the characters are so full. And that also comes from an actress who played so many roles that some of my characters didn't even have a last name. It was like, she's the female, she's over there, no one cares. And I'd be like, but does she have a home? Does she have a last name? Does she have wants, needs? And it was like, I was just facilitating things for the male role. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I didn't want to do here. So I made really clear to flush out every single character and through that becomes story. You know, through that, it's not the other way around for me. Like, yes, you have an idea, but um, it's again, it's through character. Oh, wow. That's amazing. You can really you can really see that, especially in, in you know, our lead women here who are just so, so incredible. I wanted to know, you know, what was your favorite thing to bring to life on screen? What was maybe the most challenging, like while you guys were filming? Everything <laughs> challenging in COVID, 21 days to shoot four time periods, practically no money, a horrible first producer. Like I can go on the Mm -hmm. challenge COVID, like I said, a winter New York. Um, But still that is, I started in, in independent films 
back in the day and made them on no money, got changed in the backs of trucks. And like we made beautiful when indie films were indie films. And and so I love that grit and grind of like making something work when you're like, like, for instance, Emily's last scene, not the one with me, the one with uh, Dominic, she had two takes. Oh, wow. Two takes like I love that under pressure kind of because you you see what you're made of and it's honestly if if you're if you're if you allow it you get such you get pushed to such a wall that sometimes you have to make different moves and different decisions and therein lies magic you mm -hmm. have to just be open to it so like I wasn't expecting this um, for instance, one of the things that that did happen is the day we were supposed to film the ending that I had written, which is similar to what you saw, but that scene that you saw that ended it was a scene prior to another scene. Oh, wow. And we couldn't film it because it was on the Verrazano Bridge. And it was that day that they closed the Verrazano Bridge. In all of my years, I have been in New York. I have never heard of them closing the bridge. And they closed the bridge due to a windstorm. Wow. And we couldn't film it. And I was like, I don't have an end to my movie. I don't have my ending. And it was in editing that I found where and how to end this movie. Wow. So- yeah, it, it it's been it's been a journey. It's been a journey with this for sure. What was that original ending going to be? So it was um Emily uh is on the side of the road. Um and there was a scene also that wasn't in there that would have made this make more sense, but Emily's at the side of the road with little Lily. Mm -hmm. And she is scared. She, she doesn't have the tools. Like she, we mentioned that she gets scared going over the bridge and she gets panic attacks and all that. So she's like, where am I, like, where am I going? And she looks over, she looks at Lily and Lily just looks at her and she takes a minute and she looks back and there's Connie and Connie just goes, go. Like she's oh, imagining like her yeah, sister. Yeah. With her. And as she drives over the bridge, we're like, oh, she's getting away. And but. And as she's driving in the rear view mirror, you see one of those cars that is always waiting outside the house kind of going up. And she's like, <gasps> and she looks over and it's just a family. Oh, oh. Looked out at the front, like, is she ever really out kind of thing? Yeah. And, and, and I love it. And, and like, I wish we would have filmed it, but I got to say there's such simplicity that speaks volumes in the way it ended and it's honestly smarter than I could have written and I when I saw it I was like done we're done we're yeah. done here so yeah. you have to be open to like what the movie what the film is telling you at a certain point and step out of the way and I was thankfully smart enough to step out of the way oh wow that's an amazing story <laughs> Wow. I, I just love how passionate you are about this and you could tell like how much heart you have in this project. And I'm just excited for whatever you're going to work on next. I'm like, what's the next directorial project? I can't wait. I know. Um, Appreciate it. I just want to thank you so much for your time and, you know, congratulations on everything. I'm, I'm so excited for people to continue to find the film. I, I agree. And don't ever let anybody tell you you don't have a face for a camera. You're absolutely beautiful. So keep going. Thank you. Keep Thank going. You. Keep going, Kristen. Thank you so much, Jennifer. It was so amazing to meet you and speak with you today. Thank you so much to Jennifer Esposito for joining me in this amazing conversation. You can watch the video podcast at youtube.com slash kmaldo or listen to the audio version on your favorite podcast listening platforms. And get more at popcultureplanet.net. Keep up with me at kmaldo, K-A-Y-M-A-L-D-O on all social media platforms or the podcast at Pop Cult Planet. If you enjoy the episode, subscribe so you know when a new one is posted, rate and review this podcast, and share it with your fellow pop culture lovers. Thanks for listening. It's been a blast and I'll catch you in the latest episode. Consider subscribing if you like this video and get even more entertainment news at popcultureplanet.net. See ya!